Hello, Possum Streamer here, Hardcore Castle. I had fun building up the walls, but I've had to stop because I've run out of andesite. I really need to get down into the quarry and do a bit of digging. And I've got to take a shovel down with me too because... Let's run over. It's been snowing and I want to get that snow so that I've got blocks to maybe add some more to the village. But we have got at least up to this height, so I can today start the hall. This is what I want to do. And I have a forest starting because I ran out of dark oak and I really want dark oak for the roof of this. So I have altered the layout a little bit from when I did it a couple of episodes ago. I've made the hall slightly narrower and... I've put in the dividers so this is a little screen passage which is where the servants can enter from the buttery and the kitchen we'll be dealing with that in another episode then we've got the main part of the hall which I've got bottom half slab so I don't have to worry about lighting it we've got the dais up here for the Lord and his family honored guests whatever and a little room here for the honoured guests to use if they need it. That makes it sound like a toilet. It's not a toilet. It's like a little dressing room or gathering room or something like that. So that is our hall. Now I'm just taking some blocks out and we'll be putting other blocks back in. We'll have a door here. I might... Oh. oh. I might be an idiot. I might texture as I go. There we are. Okay, that's that's not too bad. And having done that, I think I'll just build the rest up in stone brick and then come back and texture. Because otherwise I'll just be going silent all the time. Okay, so let's get started with this. A great hall. That's what we're used to calling them, but that's not necessarily what they would have been called. As with the great tower... Great doesn't mean splendid or special. It just means tall or big. And this castle will only have one hall. So this wouldn't actually be called a great hall, even if it was considered very large or very splendid. It would just be the hall. You only call a hall the great hall if you have more than one and you want to indicate which one is the larger of the two. So the hall was the centre of castle life, really. As with our wooden castle, this is where all the servants would sleep. Everyone who works at the castle would sleep in here. If there weren't separate quarters for the Lord and his family, they'd be sleeping in here too, although probably in this back room rather than in with everyone else. The business of the day would be done here. Yes, there'd be feasts in here, but you'd also have receptions for important people. You'd have people bringing the business of the day to the Lord. I want this dispute settled or this has happened to me and I want justice for it. They'd come to the Lord in the hall. And I'd better put some light in here and in the back room. And up here as well. Can't have the hoi polloi in the special rooms. There we go. Right, so let's talk about dimensions a little bit. The pool has to be one and a half to three times as long as it is wide. This is nine wide and 24 long, so we're okay with that. And it has to be taller than it is wide. So it has to be at least 10 tall, if not more. So we've got what? One, two, three, four, five. We've got six. Oh, what's going on with this? I have decided that when we get rid of this, this will go. I am going to dig out the inner bailey so that there is a little bit of a step down from the buildings at the back. Oh, they're growing really well. Okay, so I'm just going to build this up another one row probably and then we'll start sticking in windows. All 
Now let's have a look. Oh yeah, that's that's not bad. You only get windows on one side because we've got the other wall butted up against the main castle wall, obviously. And they're not going right the way down. So you've got later styles of Great Hall that do. But I mean, let's face it, we're probably sometime around the 1200s, probably, just with the way things are going. I was merrily building and chatting away to you all and then realised that I had at some point accidentally pressed stop recording. Ooh, I've got a lot more fields to make, but that's starting to look really good. Ugh, distracted, distracted. <laughs> so I have built up quite a bit. Let's have a look. We've got six large windows. Yes, they're up high. That's okay. They're supposed to be. Let as much light in as possible. And they're going to have glass in them. Keep the glass away from the ordinary folk as much as possible. I'm going to have to see if I've got any sand. We can easily pop down there and get some. Now, you might be saying, why aren't you texturing the castle walls? Because I'm not. <laughs> The castle walls, I want to look as neat and pristine and well kept as possible because that's what's protecting us. I may later go through and texture, it depends how I feel. But for the moment, no, I'm, I'm quite happy to not. Okay, there we are. That's the walls done. I think we might pop down and have a look. Oh, we can do that now without risking life and limb. I think that's suitably imposing, don't you? Right, so let's get this end done. We're just going to put a normal Minecraft gable end on. You know, just bring it up to a point, reduce it by one each time. You know the deal. I think that's all right. I think. Yeah, it's not bad. The next thing I want to do is chop down all those trees and grab some glass. I'll see you in a little while. Well, I ran down to the beach that's over there. I got some sand and I've put some glass in. Glass was incredibly expensive in medieval times and it wasn't like the glass we have now. It was thicker, um, often more cloudy, might have bubbles in it, definitely would have imperfections, would be quite wavy. You wouldn't see through it as clearly as we do now. You wouldn't have people running into a clean glass window because they didn't see it. Because this is the main audience hall, because this is the focal building of the castle, we've got some glass in it. The Lord is really showing off that he's got a bit of dosh behind him. And we've even gone for blue. Blue was a very expensive colour. It had to be made with lapis lazuli, which had to be imported from Afghanistan. So what I have to do now is make the roof. I've got to think about how I'm going to do that. I want a sort of um, illusion curve on it so that the roof looks uh, steeper than it actually is. I've got some dark oak. I've also got, oh, wrong place, crafting table over here. I've also got some spruce because I want to put a spruce roof on, but I want dark oak support beams. And at this point, I really wish I had some scaffolding. If a wandering trader ever turns up with some bamboo, I'll be his friend for life. I know the sort of shape I'm after. No. Um, I think that's better. Now, while I'm up here driving myself crazy and mucking around with this, why am I doing this in wood? Why isn't this being done in stone? because stone vaulting was only for churches. Secular people weren't allowed to have it. This is a fairly grand building and you could make an argument that it is actually competing with the church in terms of its grandeur. So there's ways that it has to be kept different and the roofing is one way. No stone vaulting in a secular hall. Ah! Oh, thank goodness I have Feather Falling 4 on my boots. Oh. Right, I'm going to 
I'm going to work on this roof. I'm going to concentrate. <laughs> and then we'll come back and have a look. It's too thick. I hate it. <laughs> I hate it. I hate it. I'm going to work on this. I'll get back to you. Okay, I got a bit of a push on. I know it's really hard to see it with this thing in the way. We will get rid of that. But we've got a roof on. And I think we can have a look inside. So we'll go down to the kitchen end. And I'm thinking I might put a stained glass window here. I'm thinking about it. We'll see. But for the moment, let's put some doors in. As I said, these go to the kitchen and the buttery. And then this is the screen passage. And we have stairs up here to a minstrel gallery, which is a great place from which to view the hall. I know it's dark up there. I don't care. It's fine. But look, we've got our roof in. I'm actually really happy with that roof structure. I quite like it. And it does give the illusion of the hall being taller and thinner than it actually is, which is what it's for. Now I'm going to put in some doors. There we are. Now you've got big splendid doors for the hall and often there was a little door inside the door, so sort of like a, a wicket gate. Oh, isn't that annoying? I need one more which means I'll make it there instead. There we go. So I'll grab one more. There we go. That's finished. And I probably should... Oh, do you know, instead of making those, I should have just taken those two out and put a door in its place. That is so annoying, but I think I will do that. There we are. We've got the big doors to the hall and a little wicket door. Now, in terms of furnishings, you're almost looking at it. With our modern conceptions of a great hall, we often think of a room that is wood panelled. I was very reticent to put those trapdoors up there because wood panelling is not a thing, not really until you start to get around the 1500s, late 1400s maybe. So that's not wood panelling, that's carved decoration. That's all that is. It's not wood panelling. You just had the stone and you might have tapestries and banners hung along this big expanse of wall and along the back there. Along the front, this is the back, sorry, the Lord sits at the front, but not an overabundance of furniture. Now I'm going to work out more or less where the middle is. That one that one and that one because I am putting in a large hearth. Give it about a hundred years and instead there would be a large fireplace here probably big enough to stand in but for the moment central hearth. Now in terms of seating the Lord gets a chair with a high back Hello Lord, and maybe his lady and maybe his eldest son get a chair each, but not so splendid. Or the son might even just get a stool, that's more likely. You can tell looking at the chairs who's got precedence. And speaking of precedence, precedence dictated not only the order in which people entered the room and where they sat up there on the dais, but also where they sat in terms of eating. Now, as I, you know, this room is pretty much empty. But if the Lord is conducting business, he gets to sit on his lovely chair. Everyone else stands. If there's a meal, there's stools or benches brought in for people to sit. There are trestles brought in and boards set across them. So you've heard of bed and board 
That's because food is served on a board. So there would be a board up here for the Lord. If the Lord is very rich, he might have an actual table that stays here all the time. But yeah, it's a big commitment to space. There certainly wouldn't be permanent tables in here for eating, not at this stage. So trestles and boards for everyone to eat. People get stools and benches. And the further down the hall you sit, the less important you are. Oh, and now this doorway would probably be covered with a curtain, a tapestry of some sort. This one will have a little door to. So that's my very, very disjointed explanation of a great hall or in this case, a hall. And much toing and froing, but I'm quite happy with it. I'm not sure what I'll be doing next time, but while I'm making up my mind and quarrying for andesite, there's end cards on the screen to some more of my videos. And if you've made it this far, put the secret code phrase in the comments, raising the roof. See you next time. Bye.